it's Teresa Croft. I'm co-founder of the Kingdom Messenger Network. We're so glad you could join us for uh, live video ministry. And when we say we believe you can go around the world from your kitchen table, the reason we say it is because that's what we do. We are gathered around our kitchen table. We call it Firebrand Table Talk. We have uh, a guest around the table every Monday night. And we figured so many of you uh, would like to be encouraged. The power of technology is part of the passion behind the Kingdom Messenger Network. We're a network where we could support you. It's the number one resource to support you as you spread your message. Spread your message with purpose for promotion and profits while advancing the Kingdom of God. Got a great uh, special video to introduce you to the music of uh, Sherry Hobbs, known as Precious Jewel. Before we hear from Pastor Dave, let's check it out. A beautiful, beautiful song. <laughs> it's called Worthy. Lord, I just want to thank you for all the many blessings that you have stored into my life. And I just want to give you the praise, the honor, and the worship, because you're worthy. You're my everything, Jesus. And I love you. of tissue or a handkerchief, you might want to get one tonight. Because we're going to open up, as some people say, Pandora's box. And we're going to take the layers off of an onion and we're going to peel back the layers of the pain. And we're going to learn what it's like to have a soul wound and how to overcome these soul wounds. So, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Luke 
chapter 17. Then he said to the disciples, It is impossible that no offense should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Many times in our life, people offend us and they never come back to say they're sorry and somehow or another we wound up getting the privilege of suffering because we don't know how to be free from the soul wound. Sometimes it's just the opposite of that. Sometimes it's the closest person to us. Sometimes it's a relative. Sometimes it's a spouse. Wherever the offense comes from, wherever the hurt comes from, we have to learn that, that we have to forgive and we have to learn how to overcome that and push on because if we hold on to that offense, we'll surely stumble and fall ourselves. Because, you know, the Word says if we forgive men their trespasses, then the Father will forgive us our trespasses. And as I began to pray and meditate in the presence of the Lord, He began to show me a scratch. He said, you know, just a little scratch. He said, that thing, you, you don't think nothing of it. You see it. You go on about your business. It heals up. It closes up. Next thing you know, you look down and it's gone. You don't think nothing of it. He said, but with a soul wound, he said, a soul wound is like a deep cut that goes deep into the flesh. And he said, the first thing that happens is it begins to bleed. And the blood is the beginning process of healing, believe it or not. The blood is keeping anything from contaminating you from the inside out. And immediately when you're offended, the blood of Jesus is a covering for you. And if we'll apply that blood, we'll allow that blood to cleanse us and to, and to walk forward, we won't wind up with the effects of carrying a soul wound. Okay? So, the deeper the cut, the longer the process of healing, but there's also some instructions and some steps that we have to follow. Okay? Now, you can approach this from both perspectives. You can approach this as the one that has offended or caused the soul wound. Or you can approach it as the one that received the soul wounds. But believe it or not, both were, were all on the same page. Each of us in our lifetime have caused offenses or caused soul wounds. And we've also received soul wounds. There's a plan of action that God wants us to take as the body of Christ to establish integrity in His kingdom. Amen. And as I read some of the stories, uh, Lazarus and the rich man and Hosea, and, and as I began to meditate, the longest psalm in the Bible mm -hmm. had more meaning about the application mm. of staying pure in many areas. So many nuggets of wisdom and knowledge and understanding were found in clear points in Psalm 119. Mm. And uh, I began to ask the Lord, I said, well, after the blood comes from the cut, mm -hmm. or after the person has betrayed you, or cheated on you, or stole from you, you know, it, soul wounds can be a number of things. It can be anything, Okay. But after the offense has come, how we deal with it determines where we go in our relationship with the Lord. Whether we've caused it or whether we've received it, we still have to forgive. That's right. It's very important that we forgive. Mm. If we've received the soul wound, the first thing that happens is we close all the gates to our heart and we walk in fear. We get a negative, nasty attitude and we decide that we're not going to open up ourselves to anyone else at any given time. We're not going to be vulnerable. We're not going to develop the depth of relationship that God wants us to develop because we've been hurt. Mm. And we're just not going to go through this pain no more. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Mm. The Holy Spirit says, if you'll forgive, right. I'll heal you. And then we get this mentality and we decide, well, I can forgive, but I can't forget. 
Well, if you're committing to not forgetting, you're committing to not forgiving. Mm. Okay? So, the first step in overcoming a soul wound is to admit there is a problem, there has been an offense, and open yourself up to talk about the pain. If you have a dear friend, it'd be, it'd be good if you could share this with a dear, dear friend. But there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And I guarantee you, Jesus has always got a listening ear. So if you have only Jesus to talk to, He said the Holy Spirit's the greatest teacher that we have ever known, and we need not that another man should teach us. Mm -hmm. So if you'll really enter into the presence of God and talk to Jesus about it, He'll guide you through it. Okay. okay? So, as you're willing to open yourself up to the pain, it seems as though you've got to relive the whole situation because God wants you to see what you put on the inside of your spirit as you walked through this offense and you were shocked and stunned and walked out the fear and the hurt and the anger. See, the anger sometimes will make you say things that you regret later, right? Yeah. So, we have to be careful that what we're walking through, God is carrying us through. Okay, What we're walking through, God is carrying us through because we're willing to grow in Him and get over it. So as you think about that blood running out and that impurity coming out, the next thing you want to do is, is, is you want to boil that wound out. Okay, uh, Deep cut, you want to boil that laceration out. You want to put some peroxide on that thing and you want to, you want to get all the, all the surface stuff off of it. You want to scrub it and you want to clean it. And, Ouch. you know, uh, as I began to ask God, you know, what in the world could this be and God said well to face that wound that open wound like that again God said that you have to be willing to forgive you have to be willing to forgive that's right okay and so boiling it out means that you've got to go to that scene of where that hurt or that wound mm -hmm. took place okay. see many times we will wrap it up in a pretty box we will put it back in that and in, in the, in the recesses of our heart and, and, and you know, we're okay and, and how you doing? Oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. No, you ain't fine. You're going through a divorce. No, you ain't fine. You got a husband that just run off and got strung out. Oh, no, no, you're not fine. You've got a soul wound that's happening inside. You don't lie about it. Find somebody. Talk to them about it. Contact wow. us. We'll talk to you. Man, that's right. Talk to us. Or on Facebook, Dave. Facebook, Facebook, Facebook right. any of the social medias. Yeah. Our phone numbers are available. Our right. emails are available. And that's we're not just thought. talking. We're, we're not just talking right. to people that haven't experienced anything. Okay, and we're not presenting ourselves as though we haven't experienced anything. Okay, so we're going to continue to boil this wound out. We're going to face this issue. We're going to be willing to forgive, even though at the time it'll say. You know, it'll seem like that we can't forgive. We're just so crushed. You know, no matter what it is. It could be the death of a loved one. It could be the death of a child. You could be mad at God. You could be mad at your mama. You could be mad at your spouse. It could be somebody that, that you trusted and stole from you. It could be somebody that took away your business, stole your house, stole your car. The offense is, you know, you can put a title on the offense if you want to. We're just going to call them soul wounds. Anything that cuts you deeper than the flesh that goes into your soul. Right. It affects your spirit. Okay? And so, as you're asking God to help you to forgive, you're willing to forgive and you're willing to face it. And so, God says, well, you've got to be willing to follow instructions. Right. You know, sometimes you have to humble yourself in order for God to lift you up. You know, the last thing you want to do sometimes is apologize to somebody when you know you wasn't wrong. That's true. That's hard. <laughs> you know, it's... But what, what are the sins of the world are the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And the pride of life will keep you from wanting to admit. That's right. Okay, or keep you wanting to submit. Either one, they'll keep you from both. They'll keep you from submitting, they'll keep you from admitting. Okay. In this case, it would be submitting to humility knowing that you weren't in the wrong. Okay. So whatever instructions God gives you, you have to be willing to follow those instructions. Now notice you pull this thing out and you've got to dry the wound off. Okay? So you've got to get something to pat that wound Is down Is that with. step three, dry it off? 
No, uh, one is admit there's a problem. Two, Two is to be willing to forgive. Three is to follow instructions. Or, or willing to forgive is bowling it out. Oh, that's forgive. Uh-huh. What step is that? Now we're on uh, we're on uh, drying the wound. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Really, what we're doing is we're preparing to get rid of the wound. That that's the whole process of this is so that we we get rid of the, the wound. Period. And so so as we we see the the boiling out that's taking place and and we begin to pat it and we begin to dry it off and you begin to think, well, what in the world is that? Well, I'm going to tell you what this is. At this point right here, we need the renewing of the mind because unless the renewing of the mind comes in, Mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to go forward. Okay, Because you see, the first thing the enemy is going to do is he's going to stir up a situation that's going to be close by you that's going to seem like something that you went through or somebody that you hurt went through that they're trying to overcome and whatever he can do to stir it up he's going to try to stir it up so in other words he's going to remind you of that wound okay right and and if your mind is not re- renewed if you're not careful you'll run back into that box you've been hiding in <laughs> <laughs> you'll run back into that depression You'll close all the gates again. You won't open yourself up. You won't share. You won't talk. You won't be your joyful self. All right. Because instead of renewing the mind and thinking on th- what sort of things are true, what sort of things are noble, what sort of things are just, what sort of things are loving, what sort of things are pure, what sort of things are good report, you get you get Philippians four eight kind of coming out there. Instead of meditating on the things that you should meditate on, you begin to meditate on what happened to you. And you begin to feel sorry for yourself because that's what he wants you to do. You begin to wallow in self-pity. And the next thing you know, you've gone back, okay? Before you even got the wound bandaged up, you've gone back and you've reopened the wound, okay? Okay. You've hit that thing. Trying to get over there to get the scissors to cut the galls, you've hit it on the counter and you've ripped the the flesh back open again, (laughs) so to speak. So... You uh, you want to you want to renew your mind, and as you renew your mind, you renew your mind from the Word of God. Okay, He said, "Thy Word I've hidden in my heart, O Lord, yeah, that I might not sin, sin against, against you." Psalm you just start you just start meditating in Psalm one nineteen, you know, and 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 you just start getting inside the Word and seeing what Jesus said and how Jesus responded and what His characteristic. His, his qualities and characteristics are because there's not a greater example of humility. The humblest man before Jesus was Moses. But if you really want to see a humble man, you follow the life of Jesus. Okay. Now, Hosea is a good example of Christ in the Old Testament because, because he's married to the, to the, the unfaithful. He's married to... Uh, infidelity and he's married to the backslider and and so so in Hosea Hosea is a picture of Christ being married to us in our sinful nature because Romans 3.23 tells us that for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God now this is the nuts and bolts of what it takes to become whole body mm-hmm. soul and spirit if you're not willing to go forward and you want to hold on to it you turn the video camera off your laptop off however you're viewing this your iPhone your uh, your droid whatever you're viewing this on you can turn the message off now because it's not for you but if you want to go forward in your relationship Amen. then you follow carefully what the Holy Spirit's instructing you to do and I always pray about it okay but if you want to get past this patent down stage and you want to put on the balm of Gilead, which is the ointment, which is the anointing of God that's going to make you whole, and you want to go forward, okay? And there's nothing that's going to make you any more whole than renewing that mind in the Word, okay? And so you put the balm of Gilead on. You've applied the blood of Jesus to it. And you're saying, you know, Lord, I realize what you suffered on the cross for me. And I'm so grateful that you were willing to die for me. You were willing to forgive me. I'm so grateful for the fact that you had done nothing wrong, yet you were willing to take my place. And then I look at my life and I see all the things that I have done. Okay, so you're starting to see that in order to prepare to bandage the wound up, we're starting to see that you can't judge the person that hurt you. You can't condemn the person. Now, I know a lot of times, you know, your thoughts might go... You know, in the flesh, if when your thoughts go in the flesh, you know, uh, I wish they was dead, or I hate them, or 
you know, and those yeah, kind of those, those yes. kind of things coming out of your flesh. Yeah. See, see that that lets you know that you do have a soul wound. Yeah. See, see, and so when you say that, you say these things, you're putting these other spirits into motion. Emotion. Okay. So, so we want to get past this point. We want to say, "I wish you were dead." Or I hate you, or I don't never want to see you again. See, we don't want to say those kind of things because what we're doing now is we've moved away from receiving the offense to being the offender. But Jesus said in Luke six thirty-seven and thirty-eight. Okay, he he said, "Judge not." Let's just it's there. We can go there. Luke six thirty-seven. What? Thirty-seven and thirty-eight. He said, "Judge not, and you should not be judged. Condemn not, and you should not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven." Give it to be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will men put into your bosom. For with the same measure you use, it would be measured back to you. Now, this divine example of judging not and condemning not shows us that as we sow this, we're going to rip, reap this because they're going to be given back into us where we, you know, the unmerited favor that we receive from, from God, which is grace. It's, it's God's unmerited favor. We get the same thing from man when we sow it. Okay. okay. I want you to understand as long as that wound is open on you, you're considered to be a hurt person. Mm. Hurt people, hurt. the only thing they know how to do is lash out and hurt back. That's true. If you've been cut, you want to cut. That's sad. That's okay? true. And so what we want to do is we want to get you past the point of seeing your wound. Okay. We want you to see the help. I love, you know, it says, I love one time, you're talking about Jesus being the balm of Gilead. And I remember one time reading, or I don't know, but I love the way the balm of Gilead not only took the sting out, which, you know, the, but, it, but the balm was what brought the healing. So it's, you know, so you know you're going to have hurt because getting that first step of admitting it and then, and then having to relive it, it kind of like, that's definitely boiling out because you got to relive that hurt but i love the idea of immediately bringing that into your relationship with jesus even if you have to have a mentor or someone to help you a minister not a minister and sometimes we do yeah, we have to go find to, somebody yeah. to help us overcome sometimes the devastation of, is so great is so great yeah. that we can't face it alone that's really but, okay. the, but it takes the sting out and it brings the healing but what I like about that is the sting. It'll take the sting out because sometimes the healing process is going to be But the pride of life says, I don't want to tell nobody else what I'm going uh, through. So I don't want nobody else to know, you know. Yeah. 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 See, see, we don't want we don't want to open up and be real. Yeah. You know, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. And everything's you think even at church. By faith, I'm okay. Yes. Yeah, by yeah. faith, I'm okay. No, you're not okay. You go to church and someone says, how's it going, sister? And what do you say? Great. Great. Yeah, but, yeah you say great. Yeah. Yeah. And, like that, good. and if you notice, sometimes people say, yeah, great, I'm doing good. But then you look at their countenance their and you're like, that is the fakest smile. Yeah. <laughs> and the neat thing about the Holy Spirit, though, the Holy Spirit can let you know and you can pray for them. So that they can break down that. Yeah. He said, "For the hurt of the uh, of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. Mm -hmm. I am mourning. Astonishment wow. has taken hold of me. Wow. Is there no balm in Gilead? Ooh, is there no guess. physician there? Why then is there no recovery uh -huh. for the health of the daughter of my people? Now you're talking what, what about what is that? What now, scripture is that?" Is that Isaiah? Oh, Jeremiah. Oh, I always want to know where I'm at. Yeah, you know, see, I gotta get me. I always want her to get her own. You know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Jeremiah, uh, Thank you. chapter eight, and okay. uh, uh, that's good. the bomb is, is verse twenty two. But I, I jumped up and read a few before that. Uh, but see, it, it says that uh, the summer is ended. Let yeah. me go back over here and read this, and and this is very devastating. And yeah. and as I. He said the harvest is past, the mm. summer is ended, mm. and we're not saved. And the last thing uh. that we want to do is get so stuck on us and what's yeah. happened to us that we can't go forward. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, the sooner you get over what you're going through, the sooner God will be able to use you in somebody Amen. else's life. Preach the sooner it. God will be that's able to it. do something for somebody else. And that's you where know. you can say it's not about you and focus on oh what the God. message. But mm -hmm. you got, if you're not cleaned up, it will always be about you, and you won't be able to release fully into what God's called you. Oh, right. Preach it, honey. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so as we go forward and, and we realize what God is is trying to speak to us, and and He's trying to say that you know in Jeremiah 15 verse 18 He okay. says, "Why is my pain perpetual? And why?" 
uh, is, is my, my wound incurable, which refuses to be healed. Um, Will you surely be to me like an unreliable stream as waters wow. that fail? Uh, Marilyn so, says she's been studying, uh, watching on the live stream. She says she's been studying the same scripture, so that's pretty awesome. So, so then if you return, then I will bring you back. You shall stand before me. Okay, so the first step in overcoming anything is the renewed mind by going back to our Creator. Now, God wants to establish something in the land. You know, I thought about it today as, as I had a conversation with, with a young man. I, I, I was going deep in my thoughts and I was, I was trying to see, and you listen very carefully, I was trying to see if, if there was a family that I knew of that unfaithfulness or infidelity hadn't touched and, mm. and I couldn't find one. And, and I, I started going and trying to find if, if there was a family that hadn't been touched by abortion. And I couldn't find one. And I began to realize Romans 3.23 was right in front of us because he says, you know, all have, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Well, the enemy wants to destroy the family. Okay, His attack is against the family unit because it represents the love of the Father. Okay? And, and the ordaining of the family came from the Father. So anyway, the enemy can pervert it and get us off course and that's what he wants to do, that's okay? Right, and so, you know, when I when I opened up and I first started reading, you know, if your brother offends you, well, we don't want to confront. Very few people in the body of Christ want to confront when somebody that's does something to them. And sometimes they'll receive you well when you do confront them, when you do it according to uh -huh. word, and then they'll go back and they'll talk to other people behind your back. <laughs> well, that's their sin, okay? Just remember that you got released when yeah. you did what God told, told you, you to, do. to do. Amen. Okay? That's good. So... Understand that doing your part's not always going to make it easier or make the other person act like God wants to act. But your main concern when you're dealing with the soul wound is yeah. what God wants from you. Right. But He's going to release you when you do what He asks you to do. That's good. Okay. Uh, I'll give you a good example is, you know, when you're seeking uh, with spouses and you're seeking reconciliation and. And you might walk in total humility. Somebody in the relationship has got to be Christ. Right. Straight up. Okay. <laughs> and that means that you've got to go the extra mile. You've got to be the one that practices fireproof. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. That's, that is okay. Deep, yeah. So, and that means while you're walking in humility, you're receiving more soul wounds. But you know what you've done? You have walked out. Insecurity after insecurity after insecurity. So you caused insecurity. Right. Okay. You've sown insecurity in your spouse, and your spouse is going to begin to give off that insecurity. Okay. Yeah. Next thing you know, both of you are tearing down your relationship rather than building your relationship up. One acts out one insecurity. Okay. And the other one acts on the other. You've got blue headphones. She's got pink headphones. Somewhere or another, they've got to mesh. Okay. And if you're not willing. To, to mix her headphones with yours or, or let her mix hers with you, you know, you, you, yeah. Yeah. if you're not going to be able to, to mesh, then you need to get some outside help if you want your relationship to last. That's, uh, I agree. That's... Now, God wants your relationship to last. God is heartbroken over any divorce. And in any failed relationship, we all have to take our responsibility. It's easy to get further along in life and realize the mistakes that we've made. Okay, but what God wants, a lot of people now are looking for a mate, praying for a mate, asking God for a mate, and God's still working on us to get us ready for that mate. If He brings that mate before we're ready, we're going to have the same kind of situation that we had before. Uh -huh. Okay, God is establishing integrity and faithfulness. Yes. Okay, because He hates divorce. Wow. Okay. What you don't understand is everybody thinks sex is just a physical act, but it's not. It's a spiritual act. It's it's meshing the the flesh and the soul and becoming one in the spirit. Wow. Okay. So if you've got, you know, if you've got some issues going on, listen. I, I want to encourage you to get in the presence of mm -hmm. our God. El Elion, El Shaddai, Adonai. I want you to learn him as is, your husband. And I want you to ask him to send the one into your life Amen. that you want. Okay. Now, once we've applied this ointment,
Um, what we want to do then? Hold on. When you 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 know you've renewed your mind, you renew, when you renew your mind, God's working on your heart. Okay, because you've got to the place to where you can God can work on your heart. Okay, but then you want to put that top little arm and on that. That's the bomb giveaway. But then you want to wrap that wound up. Okay, and right. then and you're wondering, you're wondering um, the bandage that you're putting on there. You're wondering, well, what is this that's wrapping the wound? Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. What 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 is it that's wrapping the wound? Your forgiveness. Oh, good. Oh, I never thought of that. Your forgiveness is wrapping. Your forgiveness, whether you're giving it or receiving it. Oh my. Both goodness. ways. That's, that's wrapping the wound. Oh dear. Okay. So if you really want to, if you really want to be whole, uh-huh. and you want to go forward, and you want to get to the place where. That's good. You, you know, you just stop and think about it for a minute, okay? And, and, I want you to just stop and think about what happens when when those galls get soaking wet and you, you try to take those galls open and sometimes it'll pull that wound back open on it. Well, you know what that pulling that wound back open is? Is that yeah. experience of when you've run into somebody that's experienced a similar thing that happened okay. to you. Yeah. But you've done gone two or three years and then all of a sudden there's this twinge, there's this pain in your heart that says, oh, and it's this painful memory that comes up and says, oh, remember that and God doesn't want you to go there no. the enemy wants you to go there okay so you see pulling that gauze off before time that bandage off before time see that that's lifting and pulling on that sword okay but that's not God that's the enemy right. okay now right. notice the way God takes care of you mm. okay I want you to notice the way God takes care of you okay and, and I want you to to, to to look at Luke chapter 10 okay Luke chapter 10. Mm-hmm. Here, I'm going to sign on here so they can see it. On and, and I want you to understand what's happening. Luke mm-hmm. chapter 10. Okay. Now, now. What verse? In, in uh, verse, start with verse 25. Okay. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he said, he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you've answered rightly. Do this and you will live. But he who wanted to justify himself said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and uh-huh. departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a certain priest came down that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, the Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. You know, but a certain Samaritan came down the road, and as he journeyed, he came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. So he went to him, and he bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I'll repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, He who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Now if you read through the Good Samaritan, you're going to miss a lot of key important things. And if you don't really study and learn the history, you're going to miss even more things, okay? What you need to understand is the Samaritan, Samaritans were odious to the Jewish people, okay? Because the Samaritans were considered to not be a pure Jewish people, okay? You follow what I'm saying? So I want you to notice that the Jewish man that had fallen among thieves that was wounded was picked up by somebody that was wounded by his own kinsman because they didn't consider him the same as him. They thought they were better than him. He wasn't as good as them, okay? So you see, sometimes in your life when you get a soul wound, you're able to minister to the soul wounds of others better because you know what it feels like to be on the other side of the street. Right. Okay. Right. Now notice that this man bandaged the wound, cared for him, put him on his stuff. This is the way God takes care of your wound. Mm -hmm. But you have to be willing, okay? You have to be willing to let him completely heal you and then unwrap the bandage when it's completely and test the affected area. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, I said, well, how do you test 
the affected area. He said the test for the affected area is when you can find somebody that's endured or enduring at the time the same thing that you went through and you can go to them and minister to them and not have bad thoughts about where you've been or what happened to you. Okay. And I said, well, well, how does this happen? He said, when the renewing of the mind is complete, the balm of Gilead is love. Forgiveness is love. Love is the final thing that takes place. In your life, you have to be willing to trust again and be, and be willing to be vulnerable. You have to open yourself right back up to the place where you know you could be injured again. Mm. See? And that's how you know that you have been completely healed of a soul wound and you can go forth. See, there's not an incurable wound with God. But mm -hmm. it takes God when we're injured inside our spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay? And inside our, inside soul. our soul. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, scratch, we don't need no help. But a deep wound, sometimes we I'm might need the help of another one. We, not, we might need attention from somebody else. We not, might need somebody to boil it out for us. We not, might need somebody to stitch it up for us. But I'm going to tell you, there's nothing better than putting the forgiveness and applying the blood of Jesus Christ and allowing Him to make you whole again after you've been hurt mm -hmm. and injured. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you what you're going to continue to do if you don't apply the lessons of the Word is to forgive and to be forgiven. If you don't forgive, you're going to become bitter. When you become bitter, you're going to wound other people. People. Yeah. When you wound other people, you're going to become miserable. That's not good. We don't want you to become miserable. Okay. Yeah. And you can you can study uh, in Psalm 119 and be blessed. You can study Matthew 18, Luke 17. Okay. And you can even go back and pick up and look at what Jesus said about the lady that was caught in adultery. John 8. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now now there was a man. There was a husband that was hurt there, wasn't it? The law said that she was supposed to be stoned. Okay? But Jesus, full of compassion and mercy, He rises up and tells them that He who is among them without sin to cast the first stone. Okay? So we, we must understand that in our life, we're not perfect. We've caused harm. And harm's going to come to us. He said, in the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And all who desire to live... Godly in Christ Jesus will suffer, suffer. persecution. <laughs> okay, but notice that he says, "Don't be afraid. Mm. I have overcome the world." Well, who's living on the inside of you? Jesus. He said, "Greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world." Wow. But you have overcome them, little children, because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Hallelujah. If you want to see the salvation of God, give the salvation. If you want healing, give healing. If you want forgiveness, give forgiveness. Apply the simple principles that work universally as the laws of reciprocity in God's eyesight. Be not deceived. Whatsoever a man sows, that will he also reap. Let's sow some integrity. Yeah. Yeah. Let's sow some help. Let's take a stand against the unborn. Yeah. Let, let's make a stand and let's tell these people that are living in, a, in a, 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 a riotous way of life, let's go tell them, hey, look, you're facing hell fire. Don't be afraid to stand up and say, look, your lifestyle is going to take you somewhere you don't want to go. Yeah. It's a horrible place. Hell is a real thing that was created not for mankind, but for the fallen angels. Mm. let's repent yeah. let's be about the kingdom business let's go forward Amen. with the anointing of God yeah. and let's be a people that's not walking in insecurity okay. or fear yeah. because we've been betrayed or we've been hurt and wounded but let's be a people that is sure because mm. we're focused on him with a renewed mind Joseph had oh. many soul wounds so um, I have like it's acting like I have no signal. Go ahead. Joseph had many soul wounds. Okay. Could you imagine being beat up, thrown in a pit, uh -uh. sold to a band of traders, and traded in Egypt, and you know it looked like Joseph's world as he knew it had ended 
Yet he remembered the dreams that God had given him. Notice that his relationship with God was the strongest thing in his life. A lot of times the things that we go through are because we won't surrender a certain area of our life to God. Uh -uh. God's going to move you if He will tax the remotest star to bless you. Don't you know that He wants your full undivided attention? That's right. He doesn't want to share you. So God will do whatever it takes to move you into a place Mm. to where you're developing and growing in your relationship with Him. Be encouraged to know that whatever you're facing, Amen. you can be whole. You can be healed from it. We're having internet problems tonight. Yeah. So we're going to cut this message off. But and we're going to continue, right? Look forward to joining you again next week. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.